Street Life Ministries is a Christ-following nonprofit that serves homeless folks on the Mid Peninsula. We meet really interesting people, and today we'd like to share one of those with you. Hi, everybody! Welcome to Street Life Ministries uh, podcast. And today I have the awesome pleasure of hanging out with a really good friend of mine that I've known for several years, and his name is Bill Morrison. And uh, he's part of uh, the ministry. He's been helping out and and been a really dear friend of mine for quite a long time and uh, has a very powerful testimony. So we're going to hear a little bit about uh, Bill's life and uh, what it's been like and the journey and uh, what he's doing today. So, Bill, welcome. Thank you. So how are you doing today? I'm doing good. You doing good? Yes, I am. So how? Yes. So tell me a little bit. So where were you born and raised at? I was born in Ohio, but my family. I was born in 1950 in Ohio. My family moved out here in 1953 to California. So yeah. I was raised in California. And what part of California? Uh, 30 years in Santa Clara County and 30 years in Santa Cruz County. Yeah, and obviously you like Santa Cruz. I love Santa Cruz. Yeah, everything you wear has got Santa Cruz yes, or something about yes, Santa Cruz. As on. you can see. Yes, I know. So um, tell me, uh, child, childhood, was it a good childhood? Uh, yeah, I remember it. Uh, uh, although my, both of my parents drank and uh, they were alcoholics, but my father was a functioning alcoholic. Mm. And I don't have any bad memories of my father. I have bad memories of my mother getting drunk and threatening my father with a knife and stuff. But uh, in the summertime, out of, when I was out of school, my dad took me to work with him. He's a carpenter, he's a contractor. And I remember he used to give me money. When I when he lived in Santa Cruz, it was like 25 cents to go to a matinee, or uh, he'd give me money to go to the matinee. And my father treated me well. I, I have good memories of Dad. That's awesome. Yeah. Brothers and sisters? Uh, I have a sister, Kathy, Yeah. who's yeah, four years younger than me. She lives, She's homeless in Santa Cruz. She's homeless? Because she uses meth. Mm. Uh, my brother, my older brother, Johnny, he was four years older than me. He died in 2007. He lived in San Francisco. He died from uh, drug and alcohol related death. So. And how much time do you have now? I'm going on, uh, what is it? Next month I'll have 12 years. Next month you'll have 12 years. 12 years. That's so awesome. That's yes. awesome. So give us a little bit about your journey. Oh boy, you want to hear? I. Uh, I know it's a long one, so it's a What happened was, I, I, I was doing my second prison term in my early 20s, and when I went back to prison, um, I, my girlfriend, uh, the two people that I was involved with in the burglary that we committed, uh, my friend Alex and my girlfriend Lynn, uh, when I talked to her on the phone, that was in 73, when I first got back, I called her, she told me Alex had died from an overdose. And then I read, uh, nobody told me about but the next year, 74, I read her name in the obituaries in the paper that she had died from an overdose of morphine. She was only 20 years old. And it uh, made me start, uh, I, and I was involved with uh, my older brother, Johnny, was part Mexican, and he joined a, a Mexican prison gang. And uh, I was involved with, not heavily involved, but I knew some of the guys. And my brother dropped out of the gang and transferred up to San Quentin. And uh, some of the uh, the members were going to hit me because they couldn't reach him. So I started searching and asking God. I started reading books on Buddhism, Confucianism. I went to Protestant services, Catholic services, Jewish services, looking for an answer. And I prayed. I remember I prayed. And I asked God. I said, God, I want to know the truth. And that's when I, I, got, I got a date. I lost my first date because I got high in prison. Uh, so I, I got another date. I, when I had less than 90 days, they sent me out to the minimum security beyond the wall, outside of the wall. And I met a guy out there named Manuel Lanegas, and he introduced me to Jesus. And that was in summer of 75. And I got released in August. And uh, my life has not been the same. My life has, I haven't always walked with the Lord, but I am today. He is the force behind me. Jesus is the reason I am living today. Um, I'm fortunate God has prolonged my life. I turned 70 uh, in August. I'll be 71 this coming August. And the world I grew up in, a lot of guys I know, uh, you know, you lit, the Bible says you live by the sword, you die by the sword. 
and some of them were shot and killed, uh, OD'd. I OD'd on heroin, my, heroin myself three times, and God has brought me out of it. And, and I believe uh, God has been with me all these years, and he's still with me. God has touched my life. And I got something, do you mind if I read this? Sure, go right ahead. Um, I can still feel God's hand on me. He has always been with me from my youth to the present. He has brought me through much. I am victorious. His divine guidance has brought me to this very place. And I do believe that. God has always been with me, always protected me, and brought me through. Always. He's always been there for me. He's provided for me, and he always will because I focus my life on him only. Mm. But God, uh, I uh, when I moved here in 2009 from Santa Cruz, I lived there for about 30 years, I think it was. And uh, when I moved here, I, I uh, a, a girl named Michelle asked me to speak at something called Street Church. I knew about it. I went to it a couple times in Redwood City to eat, just eat to dinner. I didn't stay for the sermon or anything. Then I spoke, it was January of 2013, and I spoke at the Middle Park, and, and Pastor Dave called me soon after and asked me if I could go on the schedule. Uh, and I became very involved with Street Church. Uh, I still do outreach, but not like, I, not like I was. But God has blessed my life, and he has opened doors for me uh, when I moved here, I, I, I got a drunk driving in 2008 in Santa Cruz, moved over here, finished my classes, lost my license. I didn't, I left my, sold my truck, left it in Santa Cruz, moved here. I, I used public transportation. And I remember praying, asking God, I said, if you have a vehicle for me, give it to me. But I really don't need it. Yeah, you do. Okay. okay. I really don't need it. So about four years went by. And Pastor Dave, that's when I met him, he asked me, what's it going to take to get my license back? I, I go, I just got to pay a fee. And so I paid that. Actually, he doesn't like me to talk about this, but the street church paid for it and helped me get my license back. And he provided me with a vehicle, a Ford van, I remember it, to do outreach with. And that's God's way, because he knew I couldn't afford to own a vehicle, pay the insurance, the upkeep because my income was much lower then. But God always provides. They paid for everything on that car, and I drove it, and I got to do outreach with it, and that's just God. He knew my need. God knows your needs, and he's going to meet your needs. And that's what he did with me, mm -hmm. and he's still doing that. Uh, I, I, I moved here. I lived here four years. I started getting involved with Street Church, and I met my pastor. Uh, Pastor Paul McGuirk, I go to his church here in Redwood City. And uh, <clears throat> I remember when I moved here, I was coming back from an AA meeting. I go to AA meetings as well. Uh, a guy named Kevin Donald gave me a ride home, and he had relapsed. And when I got home, I got very afraid. I got afraid. I, I fell on my knees, and I put my hands up. I said, God, help me. I need your help. I give my life to you. Whatever you want to do with it, I'm willing, Lord. I'm willing. And God has gives me such fulfillment. What made you decide to do that? Did you think that you were going to relapse? Well, I was afraid I would. Mm. And I, I relapsed. I had 22 years in AA when I relapsed. Right. So I knew I didn't want to go back to that. I wanted to devote my life to God and live for God again. Because I, I missed, I got saved in 75. And I used to go to church in San Jose, Santa Cruz, uh, and then I missed church. I wanted to, because uh, when I moved here on March 3rd of 2009, that's when I took my last drink. And I took my last pain kills on March 22nd of, of that month. So I didn't want to continue doing that. So I asked for God's <clears throat> help to strengthen me. Philippians 4.13 says, that I can do all things to him who strengthens me. Amen. And I stand on that scripture. I stand on it. I believe it. I believe the whole Bible. It's proven itself to me over and over and over. And I believe it. And God is so good to me. He's fulfilled my life. People think, you know, I asked my daughter, I said, well, she's, Marie's 50 years old. 
And I asked her, I said, when are you going to turn your life over to Jesus? She goes, well, Dad, I want to have fun. Mm. But when God comes into your life, he sets you free. And you have fun. You get released from all your burdens. Right? right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and she still hasn't accepted Christ yet? She got baptized in my church when she was 12 years old. But she's not fully committed. Yeah. She's not fully committed. Right, right. So. Yeah, I know... Um, in the time that you and I got to work together um, and you were doing outreach, one of the things I got to watch and really respect about you is that um, you have a really good heart for caring for people on the street. God has given me that heart. Yeah. It's that, it's that 12 step that you continue to work, right? You just continue. Continue to give it back? Yes. Yeah. Bible says given, it will be given to you. That's I don't right. do it because of that. But I got a heart of, give, of giving. I, I want to do it. I want to do it. Yeah. Well, you're still doing that today. Yeah. Sure. Are you still sharing the word wherever you go? Most of the time. Not everywhere. Not everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, why are you selective? I don't know. I got to think about that. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Yeah. I don't share the word, but I, I, I tell people, they say, when they say something like, well, God bless you. I go, he does, and he can bless you too. God has something better for you. That's true. Mm -hmm. It's very true. I tell that to a lot of the homeless people that we deal with. Right. And if I'm at the store, when I'm at the store uh, shopping, I let people go in front of me because they're taking their lunch. You got a sandwich. And I said, I'm in no hurry. Go ahead of me. And they go, well, God bless you. I go, he does. And he can bless you too. So really quick, I wanted to ask you. So... So you spent two terms in prison? Yes. Uh, how many years each time? Two years. Oh, one year the first time, two years the second time. Oh, yeah. And uh, just really quick, just for, for people who um, might watch this video or, or listen to it, um, I know it's not. I know prison is not fun, but was it, what's any takeaways from that experience? What do you mean by that? Um, takeaways. I don't know any anything that you experienced in prison that 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 helps you that keeps you in your mind like I, I don't ever want to go back to there again. I don't know. I got to think about that. Yeah. Uh, or is uh, it a, or is it kind of erased from your memory? No, it's just, I don't know. It might be. Hmm. I'm gonna ask God about that. But uh, the thing that I take with it from it is I don't want to go back. Right. You know, right. I learned my lesson. The last term I did in prison, I uh, I started at 13 or 14 getting in trouble, in and out of juvenile hall, to a, a, a county facility in Morgan Hill, and then from there, Youth Authority, county jail. I got my records from 1968 to 1974. I had eight felonies <coughs> and 10 misdemeanors. Of course, I only did time on three of the felonies. They dropped most of them, the felonies, but that's that's a short period of time to get in so much trouble. Right. But drugs did that to me. I was seeking mm. self-will run rampant. I was seeking what I wanted. What was your drug of choice? <clears throat> uh, heroin. Heroin. Heroin and, yeah. How long were you using for? Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I shot what's called uh, crank methamphetamine when I was about 16, and I used heroin the first time when I was 19. So not long, but long enough to make a, uh, I got hooked on heroin several times, so. Right. It's a, it's a killer. It's a killer. It's a killer. Yeah. yeah. Is it, how's it feel to go back to Santa Cruz and to some of the other places that you used to visit when you were loaded and now you get to go there sober? Well. My brother died in the city in 2007, like I told you, January 7th of 2007, and I couldn't bring myself to go back there mm. because of my, my brother. And so this guy I met named Joe, him and I used to go to buy bread, lunch meat, cheese, and water and candy and take it up to the city at Jones and Golden Gate and hand out sack lunches and clothes. Right. So I was going... <clears throat> to the city on it because when I used to go up and visit my brother, I was using, and he'd take me over to what's called Pill Hill, and I'd buy a bottle of Vicodin. But this time, 
I was going for something different. My focus was different, and my so it. I felt good about it. I felt good about it. So now I can go back to the city. Mm. But my brother and I were really, really close. Mm. We were very, very close. I used to go pick <clears> him up on weekends, uh, and bring him back to Santa Cruz to spend a weekend with me. And we were very, we were in prison together. You know, <laughs> the family that goes to prison together sticks together, I guess. Right. But uh, we were very close. So, um, kind of in closing out, I wanted to ask you, so I know you've been working with Street Life Ministries for a while, doing outreach and helping. Um, I know you were doing uh, uh, outreach quite a bit for a while, and then you haven't been doing it as much, but you're still kind of helping out here well, and there. Well, because of my <clears throat> health, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, but I wanted to ask you, so two stories. One is, um, if you have a story of, of, of something that you saw in somebody's life because you were able to help them out where you were like, um, you walked away and you thought, wow, that was really cool. And then maybe one story that where somebody's life didn't get changed and it really kind of affected you in your, in your heart. I've seen it. Uh, there was a guy I was close to named Ruben, Ruben Martinez. I met Ruin about six years ago at uh, McDonald's. He was sleeping in the bushes of McDonald's in Ruben City here on Chestnut. He was sleeping in the bushes, and I did the, the dog park down on Main Street before it was a dog park. It was just a park, and I walked by there. I'd always take him a burrito for breakfast, and I got to know Ruben, and he went into a care facility in Burlingame. When he got out, he was doing really well. I was bringing him to church with me, bringing him to meetings, and Reuben died about three years ago from cirrhosis of the liver. He started drinking again. The damage was already done. I miss Reuben a lot because he's doing so good. Then he made a turn for the worse. And I really miss Reuben. Uh, people told me, don't worry about him, don't stick with him, but I stuck with him. But he saved. I prayed with him. He was already saved. And when I went to the hospital to visit him, when he, uh, he went to Stanford, then they put him in a care facility in Mountain View, and I went and prayed, and I had him recommit his life to Jesus. So I know I'm going to see him in heaven. But it is, it, And I've seen people in street life that have died from this disease, and I've seen tra people that have be, been successful because they stuck with this. That's the reward. That's the reward to see the people that are successful. That's the reward for me. But I've known a lot of people, as Pastor Dave has, that have died to come to this. Uh, it's a very, the uh, alcoholism and, and addiction disease is a very, very serious thing. Uh, sure is baffling, isn't it? It is. Well, like the <clears throat> big book says, a, a Alcoholics Anonymous big book says it's cunning, baffling, and powerful. It is. They explained it just right. It, it sure is. did. Yeah. Yeah, over the years of doing this with you mm -hmm. and doing this with the ministry, I, I can get two alcoholics that, in, in most sense of purposes, they're both drinking about the same amount of alcohol. And you might get one that just gets off of it and never comes back and their life is successful. And the other one just keeps, keeps drinking. Just, just spinning down the tubes and yeah. dies. Yeah. And I don't, and I just, for the life of me, can't figure out. And, and the sad part about it is you reach out to those people and they don't want any help. Yeah. They don't want it. Yeah. And that's yeah. the sad part. So you just got to let yeah. it go. Yeah, that's right. So, Bill, in closing, thank you You're welcome. Uh, for being a part of this. And thank you thank so you much for, for letting me record you and yes. hear your story and stuff. Um, is there anything that you'd like to share with anybody uh, that might watch this or listen to this podcast Turn your life over to Jesus. There you go. Turn your life over God to Jesus. God is good. All the time. Jesus is so awesome. Amen. So it made a difference in my life. Yep. Sure I was did. destined for who knows what. But it so would, would not you say, be good. Would you say that you know Jesus is real? I know Jesus is real. Yeah, right on. The Bible says anybody, it says it in Joel chapter 3, that anybody who calls on the name, calls on the Lord will be saved. And then it says in the New Testament, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is risen from the dead, that you will be saved. And I did that. Powerful, huh? Powerful. And I've seen it in so many lives, too. Yes. You know, you know the difference between somebody who 
is saved and not. You can see it. Hmm. It's almost night and day when somebody starts, when they really accept Christ in their life and you can see the path that they start to take. It's, yeah. It's pretty amazing. Another person I'm amazed with is Tom. I don't want to talk about him, but Tom has turned his life around. Yeah. I thought he was hopeless. I really did. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's true. Well, thanks, Bill. You're welcome. God bless you. He does. Uh, every day. All right.